<laughs> Even in a country at war, 21-year-old Gleb Ivankovic wanted to celebrate his college graduation with his close friends. They rented a room at a resort, recording their much-needed carefree moments. It could be young people anywhere in the world, but this is Ukraine. We graduated from university and uh, wanted just uh, swimming and uh, relax. Just hours after they recorded this video, their building looked like this. After Russian cruise missiles pummeled the resort and a residential building next to it, more than 22 people died, most of them moments after being awoken by wailing air raid sirens. When you heard the air raid sirens, what did you do? Uh, we were having fun in the room, listening to music and getting ready for bed, Ivankovic says. We just sat around as normal when we heard the alarm. People only react to alarms in areas where fighting is taking place. We knew, our parents knew, there were no military facilities there. <laughs> the July 1st attack was the worst thus far on the Odessa region. One of Ivankovic's friends recorded this video just after the attack. All five of the friends survived. Their images are difficult to see. We're showing them because they represent the truth of the horror of war. Though they narrowly missed being among the 5,700 Ukrainian civilians killed in Russian attacks since February, they're part of another count, the more than 8,100 who've been injured. Most casualties of this war result from Russian shells and missiles exploding, spraying micro-missiles of glass and metal. Specialists in scar prevention, like the one treating Ivankovic, are struggling to help so many victims. This is our battlefield. We're surgeons. That's what we do best, says plastic surgeon Dr. Arthur Tambushan. We're good at it, and we want with all our heart and soul to help people avoid all sorts of deformities which cause depression. Who's paying for this? We do them for free, Dr. Tambushan says. This is our conscious choice. We're not forced to do it. It's done from the heart. In Ivankovic's case, hundreds of sharp shards from this window pelted his body. Five weeks later, he's still helping his doctors locate the pieces still inside his back. Early on, it was like a volcano crater, he says. My legs are scarred. I'll show you what happened to my arms and my face, too. I'll show you everything so people can see what happened to me. Do you remember when you first looked in the mirror, what that was like? When I saw myself in the mirror, I wasn't scared, Ivankovic says. I thought everything will heal. It's okay. Everybody's alive. That's the most important thing. His doctor says, yes, his wounds will heal, and the nerves in his face will eventually repair themselves. But even with laser treatments, some scars are for life. Ivankovic considers himself a victim of terrorism. The main problem is that the Russian military, they're not a military, they're terrorists, he says. An army fights against an army. Terrorists are those who attack ordinary civilians, who launch rockets into residential areas where there are no military facilities. Ivankovic's appearance before the attack, his doctors say, will never be fully restored. When he would otherwise be starting his career, Ivankovic recovers and waits. His body, like his homeland, scarred by war for now, still praying for a peace that heals all wounds. Jason Bellini is with us tonight from the southern port city of Odessa. Jason, Ukraine has recently started taking a more offensive posture. You've been telling us about this, that some places in the south, maybe in the east, but it's been so hush-hush. They're not blabbing about their plans. Have you learned anything on the ground? Well, you're right, Chance. They're keeping it very quiet. What we're seeing are videos that are being shared on social media, primarily used by Ukrainians. And that gives us an indication of what we're seeing is a lot of bridges being attacked near Kyrgyzstan, which is about 90 miles from here. That's where the front line is. Now, the analysts are saying that this may be a really shrewd strategic move on the part of the Ukrainian military because they're drawing in Russian forces from the east, the most cracked Russian forces they've got, where they can 
you know, try to atrophy them. They're cutting them off from their supply lines. Meanwhile, in Kharkiv, this is the second largest city in the east. Today, we're hearing about a potential offensive that is taking back villages that are in the north and the east of that city that had been under Russian control. So pushing them back there, pushing them back in Kherson, and what's allowing them to do it in Kharkiv, again, the second largest city, which has been just under relentless attack really since the beginning of this war, what's allowing them to do that is that they've managed to draw away some of the troops and some of the artillery that had been pummeling Ukrainian forces there. So. I would say they're having a good week so far from the few details that we know, Chance. Wow, yeah. For a long time, it was just trying to hang on, and now it seems like they're trying to push forward. Jason Bellini reporting tonight from Odessa, Ukraine. Thanks.